Come on, let's give that unto the Lord. Could we do that? Would you give that praise unto the Lord? Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you before you're seated. And I'm just going to read one verse to you today. And um, as uh, you're looking at the screen for Psalms chapter 11, verse 3, very powerful verse of Scripture that I'm going to take and use as a foundational platform here today. The Bible says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Under the reading of the word of the Lord, would you say amen and affirmation? God bless you. Greet your neighbor with a warm smile and a kind word before you're seated today. I want to speak to you today, and indeed it is an honor. It is a privilege to be among friends. It is a privilege. I met some people here this morning that I haven't seen in a number of years and others that are new acquaintances. You, the people of God, you're a beautiful people because you're God's people. And so I am blessed today to be with you, to be with longtime friends, new friends, and just enjoy the presence of the Lord together. And that's what we're doing, isn't it? We're enjoying the presence of Almighty God. I want to speak to you today on foundations for a miracle. Life is truly all about the fundamentals. When a baby is born, a baby begins to do everything he can, she can, to get on their feet as they struggle for independence. You never reach a place, I've never seen a 20-year-old young man or young woman still crawling on their hands and knees because they refused to learn to walk. It's almost silly to say that, isn't it? Because there's something on the inside of us that God put that we want to do, we want to grow, we want to understand, we want to be effective, we want to be successful. Can you say amen? In the process of all this, though, it is important to get the foundation correct. It is important to be sure that you are building on something that is proper, on something that is ultimately going to take you and be able to take you to where you want to be. Jesus talked about those that built on the sand versus those that built on the rock. Those that built on the sand, the winds came, the floods came, and destruction was the result. But those that built on the rock, those that built on a firm foundation, a solid platform, a principle, those things are what enabled their life to flourish. I want to share a story with you about George Danzig. He died in 2005. Maybe many of you are familiar with him. I don't know. He died at the age of 90 years old, and he had this very impressive portfolio of work. He was a mathematical scientist, and he really came to preeminence almost by accident. It had been many years ago. In fact, it was earlier than 1976, <laughs> and uh, when we start talking about dates, you know, I start getting a little nervous, and uh, it was pre-1976, <laughs> and he had gone to one of his classes in school. He was attending the University of Berkeley in California, and as usual, he was late for the daily lecture. As he slipped into class and sat down in the chair, he looked upon the screen and he saw two math problems that were there. And as he did, he wrote them down as the homework assignment so he could focus on the lecture. And, and sure enough, he began to do that. And the, the lecture went forth and was given, and he left and so forth and went home and, and he began to work on the assignment. As he worked on the assignment, he, because it took him some time longer than he anticipated, he turned the assignment in and it was late. And so in the midst of all of that, it would just seem like there was trouble all around. 
It was several weeks later, though, that an excited professor came to him. And he said, I want you to know something. He said, you have just solved two mathematical equations that have never been solved in history. He began to question him on it. And as a matter of fact, the interesting thing about it, it was a number of years before it was ever even recognized that he had solved these mathematical problems. And in 1976, then-President Gerald Ford issued him this high honor for mathematical achievement. Here's the point, and that is that he would have never been able to do what he did if he didn't first understand, Brother Andrews, that one plus one is what? Come on, that's not a trick question. I I was hoping more of you would get it. (laughs) I'm messing with you. One plus one is two. Now, that's silly to say that. But if you don't have a correct foundation, everything else is going to fall apart. If you're not building on the rock Christ Jesus, if you're not building on the principles of his word, if you're not building, amen, upon the things that he has established, then I want you to know when the winds come, it's going to blow you down. When the floods come, it's going to destroy your life. But I believe there's people I am preaching to today that can say, thank God I am built. Oh, come on now. Somebody help me right now. I am built on a firm foundation. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, is the chief cornerstone. So what I want to tell you today is that when you build on the rock, when you build on the things of God, when you build on that foundation, we can come into this house this morning, and as the music begins and we are ushered into the presence of God, we can know that this is pleasing unto the Lord. How many of you realize today that as you begin to worship, the Spirit of the Lord began to minister? Are you hearing me right now? And God began to do a work in each and every life, and it is yet to be seen the end result result of that. So I want to talk to you today because I'm interested in getting a move of God. How about you? I'm interested in the miracle. I'm interested in the answer prayer. I don't just come to church to see you and your beautiful people and all that, but I'm not just here to see you today. Amen. I'm here to get a move of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm here to let the Lord wash over my soul, flood me, amen, with a fresh fire so that I can leave out of here recharged and rejuvenated and regenerated under the power of God. Come on, somebody. Is there anybody today that will say with me, I'm looking for the miracle. I'm looking for the move of God in my life today, and I don't want to go anywhere until I get it. Somebody said amen. And so I want to talk to you about foundational principles. Because the reality of it is, is there are principles, there are foundational elements that we have to plug into to be able to see the move of God come to pass in our life. And that's what I'm interested in. I want God to do a work in me because what I know is his word is forever settled in heaven. What I know is, is that he overcame death, hell, and the grave. He overcame my adversary, the devil, who goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But I want some Somebody to know today that the God, amen, that overcame the adversary, he says in the book of Romans chapter 16, I'm going to put the devil under your feet and you're going to be victorious also. Can I let somebody to know today that victory is in the house? Your victory is right here today in the presence of Almighty God. Can you say amen? So the first element and these four foundational tools that I want to give you today are very simplistic, but I believe they are indeed very powerful. There's something noteworthy. There's something I believe that we can hang on to. The first of those uh, is faith. Faith is something that we understand. Faith, excuse me, faith is a fundamental in the Word of God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse number six says, but what? Without what? Faith, it is impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. This is the first foundational tool I want to share with you. It's not new, 
but it's powerful. And it's something that I believe is applicable to our miracle today in this house. If you walked in and you're hurting in your body, your miracle is going to come out of your faith. If you walked in this house today and you are not believing and you are struggling, I want you to know your miracle is going to come when you lift up your voice and say, Jesus, I believe your word and your promises that are yea and amen. Is there anybody today that will say with me, I believe, God, you're here to do a work in my life, and I want everything that you have in store for my life. Would you give him a praise clap right now and say, Lord, we thank you. Come on, somebody, receive the word of the Lord in your life. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So look at this today. Three scriptures that I read to you. I want to bridge them together in understanding. The Bible says that it takes faith to please God. Look at your neighbor and say, it takes faith to please God. It takes faith to please God, and because he requires faith, the Bible says he gives us a measure of faith. Why? Because God's not setting you up for your adversary to destroy you. He is setting you up for a miracle in your life, for a blessing in your family, for a healing in your, oh, I want you to hear me right now, for a healing in your home. The Lord is wanting to do something great in each and every one of us. So he says, you got to have faith to please me. And then he says, I'm going to give you faith. Now, what you do with that faith is up to you. There was an old song we used to sing years ago about faith. It just takes a little bit. You don't need a whole lot. Anybody remember that old song? But just use the faith that you got. I'm challenging you today to put God to the test and let him do the work that he desires to do in your life today. You don't have to leave here struggling anymore, but you can leave here with your hands held high and a shout coming out of your mouth and say, thank God I am redeemed and I am his child. Somebody shout amen. So there's dealt a measure of faith. God does it so that we can grow, so that we can learn. And so all of these things show us that faith is indeed very important to God. I don't have time to traverse through Scripture to talk about it. But I am reminded of a little woman in the book, <laughs> oh, way back at the Nile River. And what does she have? All she can see is destruction for this baby boy. As she looks at this baby that's about three or four months old, and she begins to think about the decree of Pharaoh to destroy all the children that are there. Something wells up on the inside of this mama and she says I'm not just going to listen I'm going to believe God and see if there is a miracle that will come my way what does she do? She goes and they take out of the bulrushes and they, they weave a basket together. You know the story, don't you? Hey Amen. They weave a basket together. And as they do, they take a slime or pitch and they put it on the inside. They put it on the outside. And then into that basket, into this place that she has made waterproof, she puts her promise. Woo! I want to let that sink in for just a moment. She puts that baby into the Nile River with its terrible waterfalls, with all of the tragedy that goes on. But no, what was she really doing? She said, I'm not going to give my baby to the devil, but I'm going to believe that God is able to do exceedingly somebody abundantly above all that I can ask or even think. Come on, there is a miracle today as a result of the word of God. What would happen ultimately from there? Pharaoh's daughter who is down at the water to bathe with 
all of her maidens there with her, she would see this baby and she would take this baby into the home. Can I just speak it this way? Pharaoh was such a wicked man. We know that. But in the middle of the devil's own household, God provided. And God, I want you to hear that right now. Some of you are going through a dark night right now. But I want to tell you the hand of the Lord is upon you. You don't have to fear the night because the Lord your God is able to keep you and lead you and direct you in all truth and righteousness. Somebody said amen. Why is that? Because he wants you to make it. Look at your neighbor, smile at him, say, God's got a great plan for you. Amen. God's got a great plan for your life. But sometimes all we can see is the trouble, right? Hello, somebody. Am I talking to anybody that's ever been in trouble? Am I talking to anybody that's ever had a, what I call a hiccup in life? Come on, if you're dealing with a hiccup, guess what? The Lord said, I put faith in you. If you just begin to believe my word, if you'll stand on, I'm going to give you an action step today, okay? Can I give you something to do here today? When you walk out of this building, you can use it in this house, but you can use it all through the week. I want you to walk out of here with your hands up and say, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to believe your word. Amen. I'm going to believe it against everything I see going on in my life right now. I'm going to believe it when the chips are down. I'm going to believe it when the bottom's falling out because I know that my Redeemer is alive, and I know that the Lord my God is alive on my side and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody, speak your faith right now. Speak your faith. I release my faith in this house that the name of the Lord may be glorified and the name of the Lord may be exalted. She couldn't, Jochebed could never foresee the magnitude of the miracle. She didn't know what was going to happen, but Moses would be the one that would lead all of those three to five million people out of the land of Egypt, and they would go out with a high hand. They wouldn't go out tuck-headed. They wouldn't go out with their head down. They didn't go out defeated, but they went out with all the gold and the silver of Egypt. I want somebody to receive that right now. I want you to understand today that God is meant to bless your life, but we got to get our head out of poverty and say, Lord, I'm going to believe you, amen, against everything that I see because I know that you are my provider. You are my provider. Give your neighbor a high five and say, that's truth. Amen. Amen. So faith is very much part of the foundation. And if you'll walk out of these doors here today speaking faith, I promise you, it will impact you, it will impact your family, it will impact your job and your home. Everything you do will receive an impact from what you speak walking out of here. In the name of Jesus, if you go out into that parking lot and your tire's flat, raise your hands and say, thank God, he's been so good to me. I wasn't going to tell a joke, but I think it's in order testifies to my point. It's a guy working on a roof one day, and as he is, he's, he's just a nailing away, and, and as he does, man, he's just, a, you know, he's kind of humming, and he just got a Christian song going on. Everybody's a little frustrated. They don't want to hear it, and, and in the middle of it all, as he's nailing, he hits one nail, and nail begins to flip up, and he's looking for it, and as he does, he swallowed it went down his throat, and, and when he did, he jumped to his feet, and he said, thank God, and he started shouting. Right there on the side of the roof, and everybody's looking at him, and they're confused. And they're like, what in the world's wrong with you, man? And finally, when they got him calmed down after he was shouting and dancing, and they said, what is going on? He said, I was just thanking God I didn't swallow that whole hammer. (laughs) Sometimes all we can see is the nail. But our faith is saying, you need to praise me because I have kept you and I have directed you and I have watched over you. I have protected your path. My ways are higher than your ways. Oh, I wish somebody would give the Lord a shout right now. Woo! Come on and speak your faith in this house. 
Speak your faith in this house. The second fundamental that I want to give to you today is desire. The Bible says in 42 of Psalms 1 and 2, this is the heart, the deer is what it's talking about, pants after the water brook, so pants my soul after thee, O God. My soul, somebody say my soul, my soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Desire is something I want to just camp out here for a minute. I want to let you know that desire is something that's very important with God. But it's something that's going to be cultivated from you. You could say, you know what, and, and arguably, and, and, and I'm not, the music was fantastic, so understand where I'm going. But somebody could sit in the audience today and say, well, I didn't like that song. Well, sing it anyhow. Get in the spirit anyhow. Be a part. Why? Because everything in life is not going to always suit you. But you can learn to say, you know what? I'm just going to love God. I know that the house of the Lord is where I belong. I'm going to get in the presence of God because the Lord has been so good to me. You may not feel like being in this house today, but you're blessed because you're here. And the spirit of the Lord is wanting to do something in your life today. Come on, somebody, I want you to witness today, amen, that the Lord is the one that does the work in your life, and there's nobody like Jesus. Somebody say, nobody like Jesus. And so in the midst of it all, desire is something you have to cultivate. I know as uh, Brother Andrews, they were going through the pre-service things, God bless the, the team as they work together to create something beautiful for you and the Spirit of the Lord to move in. But Brother Andrews said to me, he said, Brother Bush, come on up and let's go through your scripture. And I got to this first step, and I, and, and I went, oh. Second step was just as bad, you know. Oh. You know, and, 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 and okay, so you're like, well, Brother Bush, you're not that old. Well, I am old, but the problem is, is I just came out of the boundary waters with this crew, you know. One of them's back there, one of them's over there. And, and I realize just how old I am when I go to carrying all those things across those portages. And so what's the point, Brother Bush? The point is, is that you don't always feel like stuff. I come into the house of the Lord. I'm with the people of God. And sometimes I say, and yeah, I'm not going to meddle, so don't worry, okay? I'm not meddling. But sometimes I'm like, well, you know, I just don't feel like it today. But the Lord says, if you'll just learn to praise me, I'll do the stuff you can't handle. If you'll learn to lift up my name and magnify me for the God that I am in your life, I will do the work you cannot do on your own. But that desire is yours. Mark chapter 5, I want you to see this on the screen. It says, it's with, we're talking about Jesus. It says, when they came to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes, when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling place among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. I want you to look at that because you look in the Greek, and it's exactly what you're reading. They would chain this man. They would try to tame this man. Look at what it says, verse 4. It says, Oh, verse 3, I'm sorry. Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. They treated him like an animal, trying to do all of these things. And always night and day, he was in the mountains, in the tombs, crying, cutting himself with stones. He is a suicidal individual. He has what the Bible would determine to be legion of devils within him. He is in a place in which that he needs something. I don't know, and the Scripture doesn't say, so I have to be careful how I say it. But the bottom line to it is, I can almost imagine mom or the kids or whoever was important in his life coming out to the edge of the tombs of the grave and saying, there's dad, when's he coming home? 
looking and longing for that reconnection and that move, and, and it would seem as if all hope is gone. They couldn't tame him. They chained him like an animal, and that's exactly what the world will try to do is try to bind you and oppress you. But here is the beautiful thing. Here is where the foundation gets so real, and that is if there is a desire in your life to reach out and touch the Lord, I want to let you know there is not a devil in hell that can stop you from getting a move of God. There is nothing that can hinder you from the moving of the Spirit of God in your life today. Oh, I wish somebody would believe that right there because desire is the thing that will give you freedom in God. And so in the midst of it all, the Bible, of course, we know that the Lord knows all things. And so he shows up in a graveyard. Now, keep in mind, the Lord, because of who he is, royalty, if you want to say it that way, priestly on one side and lineage on the other side of, of, of the bloodline, he should never have been in a graveyard. He was not supposed to be in a graveyard, but he knew, brother, that there was a man and there was desire in his life. He knew that there was a miracle that was about to happen. And so what happens? Jesus pulls on the shore. I can see the, 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 the puzzling look on the disciples' face, right? And in the middle of it all, Jesus gets out. And as he gets out, the Bible says that when the man saw Jesus afar off, Jesus wasn't even close. This man's never seen Jesus before. But there was something that began to leap on the inside of him. And he said, I have got to get to Jesus. If you'll take on that kind of attitude and say, I've just got to get a miracle today and I'm not taking no for an answer, I want to tell you that the Lord can do it exceedingly, the Bible says abundantly, above all you can ask or even think. Can I tell you today, but it takes desire. It takes desire. Look at your neighbor say, you got to want this. You got to want this. Amen. I want to be mindful of my time. If that clock is right, that I'm overdue. So I want to be careful of that. But I want to tell you what I'm feeling in the Holy Ghost today. Because this is what I know about God. And that is that the Lord showed up here because he desires to work. The Bible says God will work, but we'll let him. Are you going to let your faith, are you going to let your desire, are you going to let that lead you into a move of God in your life? Come on, I'm going to tell you, when you leave this house today, let me give you an action step. You leave this house today, I want you to know, I, I, I wish somebody would just say, you know what, I can't wait to get back to the house of God. I can't wait to be in the presence of God. I can't wait to get into a place of prayer. I can't wait, amen, to be a part of the move of God in this hour. What am I telling you? I'm telling you that there is freedom when you begin to desire him. You begin to want him. The interesting thing, and you'll see this verse here, and this is what's powerful. Jesus granted deliverance today, but in Matthew chapter 8, verse 28, the Bible says this. The Bible says that there was two that met him at the tombs. We don't ever read about the second one, do we? He's not. We don't read about him anywhere in Scripture. One got a miracle. One got a move of God, right? One walked out of the tombs that day. One was delivered, but one went back into obscurity and allowed the adversary to tell him he didn't matter, he didn't belong. It was too dark, it was too deep. There was no miracle for him. Don't let the adversary tell you that today. The Holy Ghost is in this house today, and anybody can receive it. Miracles are in this house today. Healing is in this house. Oh, come on, somebody. I said healing is in this house today, and you can have whatsoever you desire in Today, you can have it because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Come on, I want you to stand with me for a minute and let's clap our hands under the Lord and let's give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Remain standing if you would. I'm going to close. I'm not finishing my message, but the third foundation is obedience. John 15, 14 says, You're my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. 
I feel like God wants to do something amazing in this house. God wants to touch somebody's life. It's more than just the word going forth. The word goes forth so that it does build our faith. So that it does cause us to react. Our desire, our obedience begins to come into play. The last of those things, and I'll tell you number four, is the fact you've got to yield yourself to God. You've got to be willing to say, Jesus, as the blind man said, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You can't come to God with with the know-it-all attitude, and and you can't come to God listing all your accolades and your your importance and who you are. You have to come humbly before God and say, say, Lord, I'm here because I believe your word. I'm here because I know that you have the answer to my need and to my situation. I know there are needs in this house today in this audience, and and I'm going to want you to do something. I want you to reach over and grab the hand of the person that's beside you. Would you do that today? Come on, everybody, just take the hand of the person beside you. I don't know what you're going through, but the God that I serve does. I don't know what you're struggling, what you're facing. I, I don't know what's hurting your heart right now. I don't know what's on your mind even as we're sitting in this place today. But I know God, and I know that he wants to minister to that need today. So I'm going to begin to pray, and I want you to right where you're standing to pray. And I'm going to pray that the Lord begin to release and begin to move among this congregation. And as you begin to release your faith, as you begin to express your desire, as you begin to obey in being a part of what God is doing, I want you to know the Spirit of the Lord is going to move over you right now. Come on, can we do it? Would you pray right now in the name of Jesus? I believe you today, God. I believe your word. I believe your prayer that are yea and amen. Oh, Lord Jesus, today you came to touch. You came to heal. You came to provide and supply. In the name of the Lord, let the work of the Lord be accomplished and let the will of our God be done. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, I bless the name of the Lord today. Lord Jesus, let there be healing in this house. Let there be deliverance in this house. In the name of the Lord, we release Release our faith and believe that you're going to do the work today in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus today. Oh, God, I'm preparing my heart. I'm preparing my life. I believe you. I believe your word. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Come on, the atmosphere is right. I said the atmosphere is right. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Amen. And the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Come on, somebody take your liberty. Somebody take your liberty right now in the name of Jesus today. Oh, hallelujah, homes are going to be mended. Lives are going to be restored in the name of Jesus us today. Oh, I love you, God, and I give you the praise and the glory. I believe you today, oh, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going to ask some of our elders to just move and begin to pray for some in this congregation today. Would you pray, man, for those today? There's so many needs. There's so many situations, and I know that the Lord is desiring to do the work today. Come on, that's it. Come on, that's it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.